Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video, we're going to learn about radical reactions. So this is the first section of, I think, five or six sections that we'll do, and it's all about the radical reaction. Now, radical reactions are very different than anything that we learned about so far, okay? So it's a different philosophy, the mechanism is different, the reason for the reaction as a whole is very different than the reactions that we've learned about. Okay, so up to now we've been doing something known as polar reactions, and that's where we have positives and negatives, or cations and anions, and there's electronegativity considerations, a lot of factors that would help us to determine whether or not a reaction is going to be favored, right? But we're going to learn a whole different set of rules and tools that we're going to use and it's known as the radical reaction pathway or the homolytic and homogenic processes and we're going to learn all about them now. So let's get started. The first thing is the, the, um, uh, the free radical reaction as a whole. Let's just talk about the, the summary of what this is all about. Now again, there are two categories of reactions. There's the polar and there's the radical. And these are like major type reactions that cover practically all the reactions we ever talk about, okay? And primarily we focus on polar. So this chapter is about radical and then you'll see that almost the entire organic chemistry year you'll probably never talk much about radicals again. So it comes up now and we learn the foundation but we probably won't see much of it after this chapter, okay? Just very small details. But what is what is a polar? Because that's the most important for our studies. Now, a polar is, imagine if you have an A-B uh, system, so a molecule that's composed of A and B, those are atoms, right? And they're, they're connected through a covalent bond, and what happens in a reaction is that they either break apart or they form together, right? So a reaction is nothing more than bonds breaking and bonds forming, right? That's what makes up reactions. So if it's a polar reaction, then we know that one of them might be partial positive and the other might be partial negative. And when this bond breaks apart, one of the atoms, the one that's more partial negative, the one that's more electronegative, right, that one's going to take the electrons completely to itself. And so we wind up making an A that's positive and a B that's negative. Now, let me actually move this down so we'll do a comparison this way. So this is called a heterolytic cleavage. Now, what that means is that we have an unequal. Hetero is unequal. So it's an unequal. Lytic means break. So an unequal break where one atom takes both electrons and leaves. See that? So that's how we get this positive and negative. So we get a cation and we get an anion. And this is very popular, right? We've seen a lot of reactions already related to this, and we're going to see many more as we go forward. But this is the general idea of a polar reaction. It requires polarity. It requires something to have uh, an atom that's, let's say, more electronegative and an atom that's less electronegative. And when there's a large difference between those two electronegativities, then you get things like this right here, which is polar. Now, the opposite of heterolytic is what's called heterogenic. So let me put this over here. Now, a heterogenic process, heterogenic, well, this is the creation of, genesis, genic, creation. Hetero, unequal creation of a bond. That's what we're looking at. So, imagine if A is positive and B is negative. And it doesn't necessarily have to be negative B, right? We've seen that a lot. But it does require a lone pair. So if B has a lone pair, then it can give its lone pair and make a new bond between itself and A, right? So these electrons go over to A, and we wind up making a connection between the two. Now, B loses an electron by doing that, right? Because it owned two, but now it only owns one. Remember, when you have a covalent bond, each atom owns one electron, no matter how they came together, right? So even though A doesn't have an electron, at the end of this, it does. And that's why A and B are both neutral, because they were both charged. If B was neutral, it would be positive because it lost an electron. In this case, it had an extra electron. That's why it's negative, right? So that's when it makes the bond, it becomes neutral. Now, this is a hetero, an unequal creation. 
And if you combine these two together, breaking hetero and uh, forming hetero, that makes up a polar reaction. Okay, and we've seen tons of polar reactions. Now let's talk about this new type. Radical reaction, so I'll write as number two, or B. Well, you know what, let's do number two, and then up here I'll write number one. Well, for a radical reaction, that's where A and B, let's say we're going to do a break. Well, A and B both have a bond between, they have a bond between them. They both have electron that they own, right, in that bond. Now, if they leave, and they leave equally, meaning they both take an electron and leave, they don't, uh, one doesn't take both from the other, then it's called a homo for equal lytic break or cleavage. Let's write cleavage. So how do we illustrate that, number one, and what's the consequences of doing something like this? Well, unlike the hetero process, when you do that, what we're saying is that each atom is going to take one electron away from that bond that's between them, right? So basically, it takes the electron that it owns and it leaves. So if that's the case, A becomes a radical and B becomes a radical. And they're not charged. Notice that? Because they own that electron and when they left, they just took it with them. So there's no change in the charge of these atoms. They're still neutral, but they're radicals, right? These are radicals. It's a, 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 an unpaired electron that is outside of an atom, right? That's, that's around an atom. So if it's an unpaired electron, that's a radical. Now, it turns out that this process of breaking homolytically requires some extra things to know about, which we're going to go into next. But this right here is known as a radical uh, process, one part of it. But the other part of the radical process would be where you form a bond equally, right? So if we have a homogenic formation, then that means that we're about to form a bond equally between A and B. Now, I want you to notice how I'm using my arrow. We're writing not a full-headed or a double-headed arrow. See, this right here is a double-headed arrow, right? We're showing two heads on that arrow. Each one of those heads, by convenience, we refer to it as an electron. So two electrons go somewhere, you do a double-headed arrow. But if only one electron is going somewhere, then you use a single-headed or a fish hook arrow. So this is called a fish hook arrow. And what's basically happening is that they're meeting in the middle. So you can illustrate it that way. You say that these two electrons are going into the middle to make a bond. And now we have an A-B bond. So when you think about it, there are two ways that you could break or form. And if you break equally and form equally, then it's a radical reaction, okay? And if you break unequally and form unequally, it's a polar reaction. Polar reactions require charges. They need to have polarity, right, as the name implies. So you need to have positive, negative side. Radical reactions do not. These are nonpolar reactions. They're nonpolar. And because of this characteristic or this requirement, it's not as popular in organic chemistry, right? Because organic chemistry primarily is taking place in solution like water or alcohol, polar environments. So a lot of what we learn about takes place in a polar environment and in turn is a polar reaction, okay? And also, it's very hard to think about it. When would two atoms not have different electronegativities? And when they're bound together, it's when they're the same, right? So really, if you have like two carbons, then that can go through a polar reaction. But if you have a carbon and a nitrogen, it's not going to go through, sorry, it's a, a radical reaction. If you have a carbon and a nitrogen, it's going to go through a polar reaction. But if you have carbon and carbon, they're the same electronegativity, so they're going to go through, a, I'm going to get confused, a radical reaction, right? So let me just make sure that's clear. Radical requires nonpolar, which means either equal electronegativities or very close in number. Polar reaction requires a difference in electronegativity.